this is gonna be a terrible podcast video when i cut out every other word it's true but it's all right because all we need to do is stop drop hello everyone and welcome to the illegal gaming chop shop we're back and i'm here with zenrot hello everybody i'm saying long sentences instead of single words hoping that you will at least catch some of them yes we have a dog barking in the background to go with the dmx theme of the beginning because the dog does not wish to stop barking <laughs> So that would just always be there from now on. Uh, we're back, and we're here to talk. It's been a while since the last time we did one of these, but that was mainly because uh, uh, I can't play a lot of new games because I still don't have a lot of ways to play them. Except for yeah, my... that is a shame. That is a damn shame. Except for my Switch, but the Switch, one of the controllers is busted, and I blame my brother for that. But regardless, we're here back, and we're actually going to do a special uh, double episode. Not a double episode. It's more like we both brought one game, and they both also, they just both so just so happen to share the same theme. So I'm going to be talking about uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, and Zen will be talking about Duel Links. That's the plan. Yes, that's the plan. And we'll start with uh, a quick overview, actually, for both people. Both of these are... Uh, TCGs made into like no they're uh, CCGs because they're collectible card games. And Yu-Gi-Oh is a TCG. Is it? It's a trading card game. It's a trading okay. card game. So they're both TCGs then. I forget the, the distinction between what is a TCG and what is a CCG. I guess CCGs are only like um like baseball cards because they're collectible, but they have absolutely no idea. But uh, in the the Yu-Gi-Oh ban lists, there's the CG, which is the original card game, the Japanese version, uh -huh. and then the TCG, which is the trading the trading card game, which is the English version. That's crazy. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> either way, they're both card games, and they're both. Um... Oh, sorry, I got distracted there for a bit. Sorry, so I just noticed <laughs> that I had messages from JX, and I fucking screwed with my head. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, everyone. But the main thing I was going to say JX, is, get out of the video. Get out of the video. Unless you want to join up with us. Call me at some point. Um, the main thing I was trying, to, I was going to say is that it's funny because the two games we're talking about, I feel like, share similarities in the sense of, like, when I was playing the physical card game, Yu-Gi-Oh! was always looked at as, as the um, the low art of playing a card game, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, Magic was the higher art because it had, uh, I guess it has more pedigree to it. What I'm basically trying to say is that this is a very similar case of the Black Swan to the Wrestler, where uh, Magic is closer to the Black Swan, where it has a lot of uh, respect put on its name, and then... Yu-Gi-Oh is like wrestling where it has it's considered the lowest form of art <laughs> of all time. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is like a like a retarded baby. Yes. In in card game form. It yes, and I've always felt like that was the basic note of it, but I will say again, I do like I really like both of them. <laughs> so, it will be interesting to talk about uh the two different experiences, it, especially since I think both of them are they both have two different like ideas about how you translate your card game into a actual video game but let's start with me because i think we'll end up talking about duel links more because i've also played duel links and i'm not sure what your experience with magic is i have played the physical game um probably 15 years ago mm -hmm. so much since um, not that I didn't like it or anything, it's just I was a kid, and I didn't have money, and I didn't have a car, so I didn't get to do things I wanted to do. That's fair. It's also very hard to play Magic without playing. money. Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, I hear those things, the cards go for, like, the cost of paintings. Yeah, so I actually did this recently because um, I wanted to see how much the old, a box set of the old original Alpha Magic the Gathering cost. It costs 6000 just for the box set. Ah, that's packs, and I want to say I think when you if you compare the first set if you compare first sets, I think um Legend of Blue Eyes currently goes for around five hundred something. Uh, well, and I don't know about that. That last time I looked, I'm pretty sure it was twenty thousand dollars for Legend of Blue Eyes. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna look on eBay right now. Okay, look on eBay real quick. Maybe maybe I have old info. Blue Eyes White Dragon booster box. Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, first edition, first printing English booster box, $16,999. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I'm starting to the see why. The next one down is 
Legend of Blue Eyes booster box, factory sealed, but not first edition, is eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. Jesus Christ! I'm starting to see why Rhyme does not want to open his Legend of Blue Eyes boxes <laughs> on uh, his channel. Yes. <laughs> Correct. It's also crazy to me because uh, what's in Legend of Blue Eyes that is worth that much besides nostalgia? <laughs> Uh, well, the the actual blue eyes itself is pretty rare, I think. Um, it's more because hang on, let me look up a PSA ten. Yeah, check up a PSA ten. Not not the oh same. Oh my like, god! Uh, okay. Uh -huh. These are some fucking wild. Like, okay, this is just eBay, so you know, grain of salt, I guess. Yes. I don't know if eBay is like is valued this? the where you go to check value, but <laughs> fair. PSA ten, uh, Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, Red Eyes Black Dragon card, seven thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. God damn. That PSA is 10, Gem Mint, Legend of Blue Eyes, number 5, Dark Magician, 1st Edition, $6,999. It's a lot of money. And again, that that's yu -Gi I think that, that's fair to say. I think that's Yu-Gi-Oh's highest cost. And then, of course, everyone knows Black what Lotus. What the fuck? You go ahead. The okay, you remember the original starter decks, like the very first thing that ever came out for Yu-Gi-Oh? Yes, the, the, very, the very many I bought and then mistreated badly. I remember those. Yes. So, first edition of the Kaiba, the Blue Eyes White Dragon from that, is $3,000. <laughs> God damn it. In what you used to own and destroyed. I, God, that makes it feel so much worse. Why did I? Didn't that hurt? It hurts a lot. You had that. We all had that, and we fucked it up. We fucked it up. If yeah. only. Okay, I'm gonna a uh, new plan, a Back to the Future type sequel, where I go back in time when I was playing card games, and I tell my young self, "Do not open the fucking Blue Eyes starter deck. Hold on to it for years." The, it's it's not a, even the deck, dude. It's just the card. It's just the just card. the Blue Eyes itself. Well, to be fair, I think the Blue Eyes itself is the thing that you want. Because, the red, well, there's Monster Reborns and stuff, but at Monster Reborn has been reprinted so many goddamn times. Who cares? At that point, it's the Blue Eyes. Well, I think, isn't that like the Blue Eyes, the only one with, like, or like the first one with that specific art? Because the Blue Eyes from the different art. Yeah, I want to say it is. So it might be just because of the different art and a bunch of other stuff. But either way, old card games, they cost a lot. That's Yu-Gi-Oh's current price range. And then if you look at Magic, that's like having a brain aneurysm. If you look at like the Power 9 and everything. <laughs> What's the name of the first box set of Magic the Gathering? It's called Alpha. Yeah, you should be able to find it. Uh, but just to, as you're looking that up, I'll explain Magic the Gathering Arena a bit. It's basically a free-to-play uh, uh, card game similar to Hearthstone. Except for, I want to say, it's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you again. Go ahead. The box for Magic Alpha, Alpha and Beta Booster Box. Empty. So it's just the box is $900. Jesus Christ. That's <laughs> There's too nothing much. in it. It's just the cardboard. That, that really goes to shit. Well, to be fair, that's someone trying to sell that for $900. let us see if that actually, if there's any biters on that one. Okay, fair. Fair yeah uh but it's similar to hearthstone it is the the thing that's different is that um it doesn't try to limit the game for what it can do and it also keeps up to date with the current packs so whatever pack uh which is war of the spark i think was the most recent released uh pack for magic it has and i want to say it has currently five packs in it or so uh, inside the game but it, it 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 plans to stay day and date with the actual game's release in terms of packs opening and uh the game itself is 100 percent magic the gathering meaning that if you have meaning you have counter spells meaning that if there's a card that you can do you remember those old Yu Gi Oh games where when you had a quick play spell uh how it would always ask you would you like to play this card yeah that's what magic has with its instant spells so if you have an instant spell um that costs like one land and you can play it at any time, it will ask you every single move. Would you like to play this card? Would you like to play this Oof. card? Would you like to play this card? And I keep going, no, no, not yet. Yes, now I'll play this card. <laughs> now I want to play it. Yes, it's my turn, and so it's time to untap my lands. But yeah, it's, uh, it's Magic the Gathering, except for in a digital space. And if you want to get back into Magic, I think it's the best way to go into it currently. 
uh, if you don't want to actually buy the physical cards because it's just so well built and then there's a bunch of good there's a bunch of starting decks you have like a mana circle where you can unlock different kinds of decks and stuff um the uh there's currently a mode similar to hearthstone you know how hearthstone has that thing where it's like um uh here's a random like tavern brawls i think that's what they're called you know where it's like a where quick... well tavern brawls all had different rules every single one was different yes so it has that except for it has like um it they just started it but it has like you have to get 15 wins and then you get um I think in Tavern Brawl, you only needed to get three, and then you got a pack or something. For this one, you have to get 15 wins. There's 15 wins, and there's, like, different tiers of, like, you get gold, and then... Sounds like a mix of Tavern Brawl and the uh, the Coliseum thing. Yes, probably something similar to that. But the mode, the mode so far is real fun, because I actually went to go check the subreddit to see how... Uh, that's to show you how deep I went into Magic, is that I actually went to the subreddit for it. Uh, which is the ultimate sign that you've gone too far. <laughs> when yeah, you're that's in. the that's the like red flags are going off. Yeah, and I went into it because I got my fifteen wins pretty easy because the mode itself is basically so. Uh, do you know what a planeswalker is? Oh, okay. I know so. what planes are. <laughs> okay, so to give a very basic like setup for wait, it. Wait, wait, maybe I do. Okay, Tell let me, me try to know. answer this first. Okay. Planes are the white. Uh, and right. That's technically correct. That is correct. Those are called planes. Those are called planes. Is that connected in any way? You're ha you're almost there. You're so close. Hang on. Is okay. Fuck I'll, me. I'll, Maybe I'll, I can't I'll, do this. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Is that um what planeswalkers are? Is that in the rules of Magic when two people are fighting each other? They're planeswalkers because they're basically magicians that um, cast spells and stuff. And then in and once uh, no, nope, I didn't. I did not have it. No, you did not. But <laughs> here's the thing: is that at a certain point in a certain set, uh, they release planeswalker cards, which are basically uh, super powerful beings from alternate dimensions that you can summon to your side of the field. And they're considered basically like a separate player and they get loyalty counters on them. And then they have like crazy fucking uh, broken effects most of the time. That was the card I told you that was like if you uh, put one loyalty counter on this card and then it can basically you draw one card and then your opponent destroys one card on their field. It has those kind of fields. It has those kind of like... But either way, there are a specific set of cards that are supposed to be like crazy mages that you join on your side of the field. And up until recently, every single pack had... All of them were basically mythical rares, which is, I guess, in Yu-Gi-Oh! terms, ultra rares, meaning they were super hard to get. But the most recent pack added like 56 planeswalkers of different rarity. <laughs> oh, so they're broke. Basically, they're broken as shit. Yeah, that but that was the basic setup is that whatever they do is that they're treated as if they were a different player and when they enter the field like they have their own like lo they have their own life stuff and if you don't deal with them something bad happens. And in the most recent pack War of the Spark, they introduced a whole bunch of planeswalkers. So in this mode you have a deck which is I think is 90 cards. Every single planeswalker from that set is in it and then the rest is lands. And then there's a card that both players can activate, which is uh, tap any number of lands and then discard a card. Summon a random monster of that specific cost. <laughs> so it was definitely it's a mode where like you have to carefully think about what kind of lands do I have? Which one of these cards can I actually sacrifice to discard? And then at the end of the day, it's kind of random what you get. And then I licked it up because I actually got 15 wins very easily. I jumped back into the game, got my 15 wins, and I was like, this mode is easy as shit. Let me go see what the other subreddit. And then it was like, it the, the event was disappearing in a day. And it was a bunch of people going like, I'm going into this mode. And then I'm automatically conceding so people can have a chance of actually getting the wins. <laughs> and then I learned like there's actually a... And there's a huge set of people that don't like this mode <laughs> at all. At least they were helpful. They were. Apparently, it's been very tough for um, actual people who play Magic to get around the idea of, like, oh, I don't understand how you play this mode. because. But I want to say it's because it's so random. Like, you're supposed to, like, it's certain. there's a certain level of RNG that you're not like how do i play something where i don't know where i'm getting and everyone's like i don't know how to play this and then i'm going i'm discarding my hand let's go <laughs> i don't know what the <laughs> fuck i'm doing 
I don't have to follow the rules. I don't have to follow anything. I know exactly like this. This is a clown parade, and I'm the clown prince. Let's go. And I've been doing extremely well. I actually had up until, because I was so afraid of ranked, I actually kept playing it. So I was actually depriving people of their 15 wins. <laughs> you asshole. I was, but that was before I knew that there was a problem. I've since stopped and actually sucked up and went into ranked mode. But uh, Magic is a great game because it's it's basically that old game. And if you've ever played Magic, it's definitely a case of, it, every game goes one of two ways it's actually very uh close and it's kind of like chess trying to see and wait to see if someone fucks up and they don't guess your move or it's a fucking curb stomp and you don't understand how you lost <laughs> there's no it happens it, in duel links too don't worry yeah the only difference is that okay so this is the picture i wanted to show you you can now look into your twitter mentions and i'll put it up right here go up to the post of the picture of that board uh, and look at what ha what everything is happening on the field right there. And I want you to look at all that, and then I want you to tell me what turn what turn do you think this happened on? I don't even have anything in my Twitter mentions. Uh, let me put it up to you again. Let me just you know, so you don't have to. Oh, oh you mean the messages, not the mentions? Oh, my bad. The 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 messages. Let me send it again. Our DM. Okay. Yeah. Check, <laughs> okay. Check I see your it. DMs is what I'm asking. I, uh, yeah, you're just sliding into my DMs. I see it now. One hundred percent. Uh, I want you to guess what uh, what ha what turn was this when this happened? All right. Based on my Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge, mm -hmm. it is turn three at most. You are correct. This happened on turn three. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at everyone seeing this current board, I forgot. I don't know the exact. I think here's the basic setup: is that one of those Planeswalker cards that he has. Uh, so he has four four different planeswalkers on the field. One of those planeswalkers effect is copy a spell. So when you play a spell, you get an additional copy of that spell and it's played automatically. And then he has another planeswalker that is you draw a card and then it's exiled from the game. But then you can play it that turn if you want. And then what basically happened is that he was able to summon all this shit in one turn <laughs> from that point on. And he has exiled his, is like removed from play, right? Yes. So if you also notice, his hand up top there is his actual hand, and in his deck he only has 12 cards left because <laughs> everything else <laughs> is destroyed. <laughs> but this is kind of magic, and I've been running a very um, a burn-centric burn deck with red, which is a lot of fun because I get to fight people, and then they go... It's the classic case of, like, um, maybe what's the best way of winning? It's like winning when you have Hinatama in your hand. It's like going, you only had uh, two li 200 life left, and then they go, like, well, surely this person doesn't have Hinatama. What's the, <laughs> the... What are the chances of that happening? And then it's my turn, and I go, actually, I did have it all along, and now you lose. Uh, <laughs> I've always had it. I've always had it in my hand. So I've been playing a whole shit ton of this. I think I'm uh, climbing up the rank ladders now. Rank is about to reset, so I haven't been going too crazy. Uh, but I'm almost at like the player level limit <laughs> to show you how much I've been playing. I have actually been ignoring my gotchas to play this game, which is actually pretty fitting because I think Legends PvP shut down and Dokkan has decided not to release any Namek things. Uh, so it's been actually very easy for me to not do anything and just play Magic. I've also not been recording videos because all I've been doing is playing Magic. And then in my <laughs> mind, I was like, maybe I should actually make Magic videos. And then I go like, well, that, that's not going to be unfortunate because if I just start making Magic videos for 10 people, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know that pain. Yeah, exactly. So it's a lot of fun. And if anyone has, I, I think specifically when I was uh, Chase, who is a good friend, a good Pikachu as well. He plays actual Magic the Gathering, and his one qualm with it is that he feels like there's not enough interaction with the actual game itself at the moment. So it's kind of like, I can invest in one, but I can't invest in both uh, kind of mindset, which makes a lot of sense because, again, I'm about to climb ranked, and Magic is still Magic, and top decks are still made out of extremely powerful monsters. <laughs> you still got cards like... Nico Bolas running around. I had a recent person in ranked. It was so fucked up where they were playing a deck. Because, again, I'm learning the decks for the first hand. So in the first turn, nothing was really happening. I was like, all right, this this guy's pretty easy. He's just letting me kill his monsters. 
uh, it hits turn four. I have not drawn the cards I needed, so I'm basically screwed out of my hand. I've played all the gambits I can, and he's not dead yet, and I'm not getting good draws. It's his turn. He plays a card that basically brings back every single monster I killed back into the field on his side of the field. Uh, and that's in the entire game, by the way. So everything I've killed up until that point returns. And then all the monsters that I killed were monsters that were like, look at the top card in your hand. And if uh, it's a specific monster type, then you get plus one, plus one tokens. And then all of a sudden I had to deal with like monsters that were way too powerful. <laughs> and I was like, well, I've <laughs> lost this game. <laughs> and then so he has like uh, an entire board filled with monsters. One monster has like so many tokens. He's like a 710 monster on the field. And I have two goblins <laughs> and they're both 2-2. Two -two. I'm like, well, I don't stand a chance of winning at this, but at this point, I'm now looking at this guy's deck, trying to figure out what the fuck was his strategy. And it turns out the strategy was hilarious, and I lost horribly. So it's, it's a lot pretty of funny. I'm not gonna lie. No, it's it's it, it's it, pretty good. It is pretty good. My favorite matches are still the ones where either I win hilariously because they drew nothing, or I lose hilariously because I drew I I did everything I could. <laughs> Because my deck is specifically made to be like, uh, I either burn you or I die quick. <laughs> so uh, at a certain point, I run out of cards and it's very easy to beat me. And at that point, it's like, well, whatever bullshit strategy you have, get ready because I can't stop you now. <laughs> my one strategy is gone. And it's a lot of fun. So that's Magic the Gathering Arena. Check it out. I don't think, I don't know if there's anything with friends list. It's still in beta, funny enough. Uh, welcome to modern video games where it's 2019 and you can buy packs if for a beta game, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, if that doesn't scream the future, I don't know what does. Yeah, it's it's the future. And also, it's really funny because apparently, uh, so here's another crazy thing. Just like Yu-Gi-Oh, there's story in Magic. And the trailer for War of the Sparks that plays when you're playing the game is great. Because it's it's if you don't know anything about magic, it makes no sense. There's a bunch of people getting killed while a lady sings in the end by Linkin Park very sadly. <laughs> and I was watching it going like, is this fucking in the end? And then the lady goes, in the end? I'm like, motherfuckers, are they playing in the end? <laughs> that's the best thing. That's the thing. I was like, well, all right, go for it. And it was a very well animated thing, but I can't I got distracted by the fact that they used in the end. Yeah, I, I can't argue against that at all. <laughs> I'm liking all of this. Yeah, so it's 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 a lot of fun. And so check it out. And if you want to find me and fight me, I don't know, tell me. Maybe I'll make a video out of it. There you go. Everyone who plays Magic, <laughs> help me justify a Magic video. <laughs> uh, so let's go into Duel Links now. Zen, tell us yeah, about what's so going Duel on. So Duel Links uh, is because Yu-Gi-Oh! is popular as fuck. Super um, popular. Yeah, it's very popular. It's kind of like the dumb kids card game, which is why I like it so much, because I don't have the patience to learn like an actual card game. So I play Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is like... Uh, it's a card game where you don't have to play the other person if you don't want to. Like You just play the right deck so that you win right away, and then you don't have to deal with whatever their bullshit is. We've hit that point in Duel Links now. Oh, perfect. You've hit the synchro meta. So it's not even really synchroing, though, because Duel Links kind of jumps around. Mm -hmm. Like, we're only in the synchro era, but we have cards that came out like four months ago in the real world, right? Mm, it's like some kind of weird, fucked up world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's based forms. You can't. At. The, the release timeline for old Yu-Gi-Oh cards and be like, oh, well, it is now. Because, like, there's Psychic Wielder and Psychic something. Oh, Psychic cards. Hmm. Psychic cards have been out for a long time, but Wielder specifically is a really strong tuner monster that I think hasn't even been out in the real game for a year yet. And we have him in Duel Links. Yu-Gi-Oh's Fusion. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff that new and duel links for people that don't play duel links there's a few ways it's where you win them by completing whatever missions or tasks or whatever which is by card packs and i i stand by to this day one of the best gotchas as far as gotchas are concerned 
Hmm. Technically, it's a banner, but there's a finite amount of packs in every banner. No, it's true. Sometimes, yeah, you can have to pull every pack, but you will get what you're trying to get. Uh, yeah, it's better than a pity break, for sure. Because it's it's just, you know how many cards yeah, are in here? No, there's no pity system. It's just they lost the event banners. You know those ones where you get the dragons from the events? Mm -hmm. yes. There's like a, a there, yeah, there's a limited amount of what you get out of it. That That's what this is. That's what every banner is. They actually have a decent amount of sales. I, I mean, it reminds me of Legends a little bit in that there's sale going. Like a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. About coming back and playing. Anybody watching this? There's a really good sale on right now until June tenth. The booster packs and one of the URs of the box for ninety nine cents. That is an extremely good. That's a better deal than you'll find in actual Yu Gi Oh. Yeah. So you get one of the rarest cards in the box at random. You don't get to pick it. It gives you one of the ones at random. Box is only three, so you have a thirty-three percent chance of getting the one you want, and three booster packs for a dollar. It's, it's a good deal, really good deal. Uh, so, dual links is speed dual rules for people who know what that is. Um, you know what that is, right? Yeah, it's four thousand life points, only three uh, areas. Basically, everything is cut in half. Yeah. And so then deck they're... size is twenty, not forty. Life points are 4,000, not 8,000. And then you have three zones instead of five. And then there are people's abilities, right? Yes. So this is like the least balanced part. Is that they release... A lot of people are theorizing that Pokemon Masters, the, the gacha game for Pokemon, is going to be like this. Where you unlock trainers and then they'll have special powers. But basically, they keep adding characters from the anime and you unlock them by just playing events. You don't have to pull the characters or anything. Characters all have skills, and some of them are generic that anybody can get, and then some of them are character-specific. Your skills determine how good you are. <laughs> like, play six or seven characters total, if that. Roster of characters. And it's not that big of a deal in game or anything where it's that different. <laughs> But it does kind of suck when basically every deck runs either Yami Yugi, Weevil, Kaiba, Yusei, Akiza, uh, Ashizu. Ashizu is really popular, actually, which is awesome considering, considering our series yeah. earlier. Yom's, uh, to her. Yom's wife repping it in Duel Links. Yeah, and these skills are like, Jesus, man. So, for example, Yami Yugi has a skill called Destiny Draw. Every time you lose 2,000 life points, part out of your deck, you draw next. But you just get to look at your whole deck and say, I want this, and you put it in your hand. And then you don't even have to shuffle your deck afterward. So you know exactly what cards you're going to draw next also. That feels like an extremely more powerful version of Destiny Draw that Yugi actually has. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Uh, and then Ishizu, the reason she's so popular is she has a skill called Sealed Tombs. And what that does is for the remainder of your turn, of your opponent's turn, nobody can use cards in the graveyard. Oh, that's extremely good with Synchros. Yeah. So, like, a new really popular strategy that's come out is to play Sealed Tombs with a Yusei-style deck with, like, a lot of his Synchro monsters. And then you you turbo out Black Rose Dragon, lock the graveyard so people can't use stuff like Neos Fusion or Bacon Saver to stop you, nuke the whole field, and then Synchro more stuff and just kill the opponent when all their defensive cards are in the graveyard and they can't do anything with the cards in the graveyard for that turn. Very good strategy. Yeah, one of the generic skills that everybody uses right now is just called beatdown. That's why everybody plays Kaiba. It's the one they get. Um, it's attack, it's right? a very third attack per level five or higher monster on your side of the field, like blue eyes white dragon that just vomits monsters. You're basically attacking with three four thousand attack point monsters every turn. One thing I do like, though, is that they try to keep the skills, like, 
into who the character actually is. Which I think is cool. It's not just like they throw shit in just because. Yeah, Joey Like, Kaiba has some dragon skills and stuff. Joey doesn't have destiny. His main draw skill skill is called Last Gamble. Because his shit's all about luck, right? Mm -hmm. Ability is you discard two cards, then you cut your life points all the way down to 100, no matter what you were at, and then you roll a die. And whatever the die is, you draw that many cards. So you can roll a six and draw almost half your deck. It's really great. Yeah, it's very fitting. Uh, Weevil has a skill where he sticks the Parasite Parasite in your deck like he does to Joey in the manga in Battle City. I remember this one. I think I did use that uh, back when I was playing. Yeah, everybody did because that skill's really fucking good. So one of my favorite ones is Keith. Bandit Keith has the best fucking skills because they're all him cheating. All of his skills are him cheating. Yeah, it's really good. One that's called Switcheroo. Back one card from your hand on back into your deck. Shuffle your deck and draw a different card. And then he has one that's called Sleight of Hand. And it's, remember when he has the seven completed his wristband when he's dueling against Joey? Yes. That's what it is. You pull a seven completed out of nowhere and you just get it. It's really good. That's a really silly move. A lot of good, yeah. If you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! like fan, like you know shit from the anime that happens, you'll, you'll like a lot of this stuff, because there's a lot of cheeky references to shit in this. Yeah, and a lot of people also talk to each other when you fight, too, as well. Yeah, they have lines, and characters who know each other uh, have individual dialogue with one another. Like, Yugi will talk to everybody, but he has specific lines for Kaiba or Pegasus and stuff like that. And Kaiba will always say to everyone, you're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Yes, that's the, that's the big meme line. The, he's, Kaiba is, like, very unashamedly Kaiba. His voice actor's great, as always. Yes. But he says it to, like, the random street duelists that are, like, six-year-old little girls. Yeah, who all they want to do is get better at the game. Yeah, and they're all apologetic when you beat them. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I tried really hard. Sorry if I wasted your time. And Kaiba's like, you fucking suck, kid. Fuck you. Get better before you try and go against my dragons. Ever try to stand up to my blue eyes white dragons. <sighs> so much of that shit. Now, one thing that sucks about it, and I mean, this is actually basically what they do in real card games too, so I can't shit on them too much for this, in my opinion, where they'll have a deck out that's like, that's definitely the best deck in the game, and it shouldn't be in the game. they'll kind of release shit over time that will balance things out. So, like, Six Samurai was out. Yeah. And they were, like, way too fucking good. Like, there's no reason that Six Samurai should have been that strong. But then, you know, Neos came out, and Blue Eyes got their buffs, and then Red Eyes came out. Uh, slipped. Because it just... The game kind of shifted to be more monster effect oriented. And Six Samurai can't do anything about that. People just gave up the over-reliance on spells and traps, and then Six Samurai couldn't really adapt to it because it just doesn't have enough attack power. Their best card is 2,500 points. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. Really good. And it was really balanced, and people were playing, you know, they were still playing Six Sams, but they were also playing Gears and Neos and Spellbooks and Blue Eyes and Red Eyes. Drops. And inevitably, like, you gotta get this deck. Deck is weak. They drop another tier zero deck immediately. So Subterrors just came out, and they are so good, and they're so dumb, and they shouldn't exist. By the time the next box comes out, they'll probably not be that good anymore, and whatever comes out in that box will be ridiculous. Yeah, that's definitely something that also happens, and I want to say an actual Yu-Gi-Oh as well. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I mean, you can't really do anything about it, like make money yeah. and two like good cards like why would you ever put out a pack that didn't have at least some good cards in it you know mm-hmm. i think the thing i'm trading when said, uh, with duel links which is funny because there's a specific time period like sing uh synchros aren't the problem with me with duel links it's one very specific set of monsters that i think so far have not been introduced to duel links it's gladiator beasts are there any in there yet oh well, there's a bunch in here they just suck okay good they haven't introduced the good Gladiator Beast then. Because that was definitely around, I think, when I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! When Gladiator Beasts were released. They were maybe the most... No good Gladiator Beast synchro monsters, if that's what you mean. 
No, I mean good gladiator beasts. Uh, give me a name because there's a lot of gladiator beasts in this game. They're just not very good. Mm. Fuck, I wish I could remember. Ton. Do they have the fusion? The 2400 attack fusion that destroys the backfield? Oh, Gia Giazaris or whatever? I don't think so. I think that's one of the only ones they don't have. Okay, that's maybe why. Because I remember there was definitely a thing of like, the which is annoying when you're fighting gladiator beasts, is that their attacks their attack turn never ended. So they would attack with one monster, they would get another monster that would summon another monster, and then they would summon their fusion, and then attack with their fusion, and then they would uh, be able to return the fusion, get back three monsters, summon their big fucking 3,000 attack fusion monster, and then just, finally they would be like, okay, my turn's done. And then you're like, <laughs> <laughs> almost like, thanks for taking fucking 20 minutes with your goddamn turn. It's kind of what Neos does now. Okay, so that might just be that uh, they don't, uh, translate well into the format of speed dueling. Because I know in regular like, Yu-Gi-Oh! they're a pain in the ass to actually deal with, but speed dueling well, is different. decks like that struggle with limited monster zones. Yeah, like Crystal Beast. So like, like, yeah, like Crystal Beast suck. And I mean, I don't think they were ever good in the real game either, but they suck extra is you can't like have any. Because if you have three crystals, you can't play any spell and trap cards anymore. There was definitely a deck specific that used them, but it wasn't actually using that the Rainbow Dragon, I'll say. Yeah, Rainbow Dragon is a, a nightmare. Yeah. Funny enough, though, you know who is kind of at least uh, ladder climbable in Duel Links? Ojamas. Still? Pretty good right now, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, damn. The Chaz event came out that gave a, a bunch of copies of Ojamatch. I don't know if Oja Match or Oja Mandala are the card, but there's a Duel Links exclusive card that was in the anime that was never made into a real card. Oh. Yeah, which is pretty cool. That is cool. That would definitely... If you want to know how how do you make a, uh, a deck still reliable, give them an anime exclusive card. Yeah, because anime card's really good. Extremely good. Yeah. But yeah, so now we're kind of... It's still a good game. Uh, now we're in one of those metas where it's like haha fuck you you have to wade through all this terrible bullshit until the next pack starts coming out yeah but it's a really easy game to get started in mm -hmm. you can get starter decks with gems if you want to and two if you're willing to drop like ten dollars you can get three copies of it and basically have a top tier deck like a friend of mine played he plays red eyes because red eyes is the most recent starter deck that came out yeah gems and two dollars and he has a deck that can ladder wow yeah, the impressive. starter decks are really good yeah, like really. the ancient gears one pretty much hands you the game too like it just gives you the deck because the ancient gear one is all about ancient gear reactor dragon which is like the dumbest card in the world i hate that fucking card so that must be very good then yes so what ancient gear reactor dragon does is uh when it attacks if it destroys a monster, it can also pop a back row card, mm -hmm. which in and of itself is not that stupid. Actually, it's not even... Um, it's just if it attacked and the attack went through. So as long as the attack went through, no matter what, it, it gets to pop a back row card. But there's a card called Gear Town, which is when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, special summon one ancient gear monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So you play that, Attack with the dragon, pop your own gear town, and pull another dragon out of your hand, deck, or graveyard. Okay, I can see how that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> and then there's another card that's called Ancient Gear Fortress, and it is... Uh, during the turn they were normal or special summon, your opponent cannot target Ancient Gear monsters with card effects, and they cannot be destroyed by opponent card effects. So no matter what, you can't destroy them with card effects. Activate cards or effects in response to the activation of Ancient Gear cards and effects. Already really good. And then, on the trap card zone and is destroyed, you can special summon an Ancient Gear monster from your hand or graveyard. Wow, I don't remember Ancient Gears ever being that good. Really good now. The old cards aren't good, but now they're good. So literally what they do is there's a card called Ancient Gear Wyvern that lets you add any Ancient Gear card from your deck to your hand. So you play the Wyvern, then you get either the Dragon or the Fortress, whichever one you don't have, assuming you have the other one. Then... You summon, you play the fortress, you play the gear town, 
pop one of them with a card like Galaxy Cyclone or Double Cyclone, doesn't matter, pop it yourself. Or like Breaker the Magical Warriors in this deck just to pop it. Then you summon your dragon, attack with your dragon, pop the other one, summon the other dragon, and you just get three dragons in one turn. True perfection. You fucking kill them. They die. It's good to see Yu-Gi-Oh! is still Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Regardless. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! still Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good, warm feeling I have. And it's also funny that... um. The, the main differences between uh, our two games is that I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is well, well built to have quick matches, I think. Because I think Yu-Gi-Oh! matches yes. don't last super long. That is more or less the appeal of Duel Links in general, is that that's what speed dueling is for. You, you want to get in, play a match, and you're done in two minutes. Yeah. And then, meanwhile, in Magic, I had a literal 30-minute match with a guy where we were at a stalemate because both of us refused to fucking stop. <laughs> so we were at a we were at a stalemate of just like looking at each other's. So we were doing the whole it was in the Momar, which is the name of the, the random mode. So we were both discarding cards and playing lands, hoping to get something and both of us getting shit with our RNG. And it was fantastic because uh we were 30 minutes in and i felt like i had the advantage but he didn't want to attack me and i didn't want to attack him either because that's the other thing is that if you attack and you fuck up you could easily get fucked the next turn and it finally took me playing a card and uh i started to get the card advantage and then i did the dumb thing of like well i'm gonna win this turn i'm gonna discard one card and play another random card just for the funds of it i play a card called rakthvos which was basically flip a coin for every not demon. If it's tails, they die. And there was all not demons. <laughs> and this included my monsters. So all my monsters got fucked and then so did his. But uh, no, actually, <laughs> I, my Rakdos and one other thing survived. But I literally went from winning the game to uh, the game just got reset. Because when I killed him, I killed his vampire, which his vampire's effect was... He gets to destroy one monster when he's killed. So he destroyed my big ass monster that I just summoned who just literally destroyed the field, leaving me with like a 2 2 guy. And then I was like, well, I guess we're back at square fucking one. We literally played for 30 minutes to get back to the beginning of the fucking game. <laughs> yeah, no, Yu Gi Oh's not like that. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, no, it's, it's a very different level of fuck. Yours is the. Yours is the very like, all right, we both understand that we got limited time. Let's do this. And then mine is a very slow burn. It's like that. Uh, do you ever see the movie Drive? Yes. Do you remember that uh, how Drive is extremely slow and then someone gets shot and then all of a sudden the movie gets super fast? <laughs> yes. That's what it feels like playing Arena because it's like a lot of like, all right, I'm just going to watch my movie for a bit. And then all of a sudden, ah, oh, fuck, I have to pause it because now I have to pay attention because <laughs> some shit is going on. <laughs> and it's two different ways of playing a card game and it's both very interesting and then we're both playing that instead of hearthstone so that shows you yeah i, I yeah i get yeah, not the shit on hearthstone because I, I did enjoy my time i had fun hearthstone. playing it when yeah. i played it but i just i don't know yeah eventually it became it's funny because i think hearthstone is like the weird combination of both Yu-Gi-Oh and magic and it's not enough of both for me yeah, yeah, I can see that. And then uh, I can't talk about Artifact because I'm still mourning and waiting for it to <laughs> the unfortunate. Do you know uh, Do you know anything about Artifact, by the way? No. Oh. Okay, so um, do you know Valve, the company that made Dota? Dota 2, I should say, not the one who made the original Dota? The Half-Life people? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they made a card game based off of Dota called Artifact, and they got uh, Richard Garfield, which is the guy who was uh, the who was helping out in Magic in the beginning. He basically helped. Us, he's made a bunch of like different uh, card games, not just Magic. He helped make Magic. Ne I think he'd made is it Necromancer? I don't remember what it's called, but he's made. He's very well known in the card game space. Uh, and they decided to make a card game using their uh, that was like a digital card game that also used the Steam Workshop, so it actually had, like, a trading ecosystem in it. So it was, like, a regular card game, but all digital, and it was very weird, and you had to pay $20, so it was the first one of of, uh, of a card game, like, where Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic, they're free to play, so you automatically start in, and you're good. With, with uh, Artifact, they said, no, you gotta give us $20, and then we're gonna give you a pack of random cards, and then you don't know if you're going to make back your $20 worth in your packs. Thanks. 
So I played it and it was, I thought it was a very fun game. Uh, according to everyone else though, they did not like the way it was monetized at all. They didn't like that they had to pay $20. They didn't like that their $20 potentially gave them shit because there was a good chance of the cars, the rares that you got weren't good enough for, uh, the, the, the market. Cause now you actually knew, uh, the price of cards, meaning the, that if card was good, you're, you were worth this much. Like there was a, there was like one card in the game that when it dropped, if you pulled it, it was worth $20 and you basically could sell that and then buy more packs, <laughs> which is what I did for a very long time. I had, I have almost every card cause I kept pulling extremely rare cards that were worth 10 15 dollars and then going i'm gonna sell while the market is hot and i'm gonna get a bunch of packs and i totally did that and ended up getting like a bunch of packs I ended up changing my 20 dollars into like uh, 80 dollars by the end because i was just getting so many cards it was like a magical mess is what i'll say but eventually it got to the point where i think artifact currently has at most 100 people playing at any given time and that's very bad <laughs> At that point, indie games are play more people are playing indie games than are playing your game. And people also recently saw that people were using the the Twitch marker for Artifact to illegally stream stuff, which it was between people were streaming st Civil War instead of the game Artifact itself. They were streaming episodes of DBZ. One person was streaming Hentai. <laughs> it was uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you do what you gotta do. In terms of colossal failures. I don't think there's been a game that's been like there's some games that come out and they're like oh this kind of sucks you know but they're able to get the comeback like uh the the best way I can explain it is probably something like uh, Assassin's Creed gets released and then people shit on it and then they change the game because it's a service now and people end up liking it and it's like well okay I guess more people are playing that game than that are playing an actual multiplayer video game made by the people who made Half-Life 2. And they've actually recently has said, like, uh, all our plans to release packs have changed. Uh, we're actually going to be retooling the game because obviously you guys were not a fan. So please give us time to rework our entire system. And they let go of Richard Garfield as well because I think he said, and I quote, I guess they don't want to play the long game, <laughs> which I think was his actual quote as he was leaving. Uh, Yikes. Yeah, it's a great it's a great way to leave it. Like he's like, no, this plan will work. You just gotta let it stabilize. And they're like, uh, that's not how video games work now. <laughs> you're either on top now or you're not on top at all. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of sad, but it's true. It's sad. So, uh, I was actually fully ready to devote myself into Artifact, and then I bombed. So I ended up having this pent up emotion of like, I want to play a card game. I want to fall in love with it. Uh. I'm not the biggest fan of synchros because I have terrible experiences of playing a deck that was a dying dinosaur trying to fight against the new gods. New era. Yeah, so I was getting shit on left and right, and then for good reason is because I refused to adapt to the current meta. Uh, so I ended up going with uh, Magic. And it's funny that around the time I started getting back into Magic, I think you started getting full hog into Duel Links. Yeah, I think so. I believe the timeline lines up. Yeah, I think I want to say you had always been playing Duel Links kind of in the background, but I had been playing Magic pretty much. Yeah, recently. on and off yeah. to play it more because I do enjoy it, but then they just keep fucking with me, and so it's like I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can feel that. So, yeah, that's a, that's a legal gaming chop shop with the two games that we came... Magic the Gathering Arena and Duel Links, both free to play. So you're glad to start either one. I would say, based on my experience, I think Duel Links is probably the easier game to... Because uh, yours actually has like a mobile version. Mine is all PC at the moment. Uh, mainly because you would you not... not do it through like a, a mobile game like browser? Like if you, go, if you go to the website on your phone, will it not work? Uh, it's also not a browser game. It is a full-on executable. Oh, it's... Yeah. Yes. So you have to get, uh, get an actual separate installer installed into your game. And I will say also at the game's current level of actually being magic, I don't think you could play it on a mobile device. I think you would actually drive yourself insane trying. You would need a zoom in function. <laughs> That's true. That's fair. That, that picture you sent me was very involved. There was a lot going on there. Yes, and that's also... There, there have also been times where it's like cards have been played and I've had like... 12 creatures on the field and i'm not 100 percent sure what's going on at any given point and then it's crazy i think that if they want to make it mobile they have to do a lot of changes to it but 
Uh, we'll see if that's in the plans. Again, still in beta. And in Duel Links, you can get it, I think, just about anywhere. It's the only thing, it's the only video game Konami currently supports. So yeah, da -da. thank you for joining us for the Illegal Gaming Chop Shop. Zen, why don't you take us out here with your classic outro? Right. Right, 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 right. Um... Thank you for coming to the Illegal Gaming Chop Shop, where we talk non-stop shop about the cream of the gaming crop. Did I do it? Yeah, that was 100% correct. I didn't think was you were it? actually going to... Yeah! <laughs> Goodbye, everyone!